Hello and welcome to Core Africa. I'm Michael Wilson. Now, Core Africa is a series of interviews with CEOs and entrepreneurs to highlight the latest in business activity in Africa. I'm delighted to be joined by Saqib Nasir, CEO of Interpay Africa, who will be talking to us about work in its payment system across Africa. Saqib, welcome to the show. Now, there's an old saying in business, isn't there? Never waste a crisis. You know where I'm heading with this, don't you? Yes. The population of Africa will be one billion by the end of the century. That sounds like a crisis. Well, it, it's a crisis, but it's also an opportunity. Yep. You know, yes, the population is growing. Uh, Nigeria, for example, by 2050, will be the third most populous country in the world after China and India. You know, and so you can imagine the, the demand for food, for water, for employment, for services. Uh, but the one thing that we have which will help, hopefully help fight this crisis and convert into an opportunity is technology. Because the majority of those people, as they are right now, these people aren't even born yet, yes. won't be banked, will yes. they? Exactly. Exactly. I, I mean, uh, and so there will be no data. And, and right now, that's the challenge we have, that there's no data. The, the economies are highly informal. You know, employment uh, is around 20%, 30% of the population. Mm -hmm. But there's a huge population out there who is trading, farming, fishing, living, and they're all earning income, but yet they're invisible. And so through mobile phones, you know, and where uh, luckily Africa is leading, where we have huge penetration of mobile phones and slowly internet is catching up, this will enable us to have visibility on people sure. and interact with them. We'll come on to that gathering of data in, in a minute, but let's just talk about the, the, the sort of leapfrogging mm. that Africa has yes. done. Yes. It's gone a long way, hasn't yes. it, avoiding all the slowdowns. Exactly. Just explain how it's, how, what the progress has been. Uh, perfectly. You know, we, we leapfrogged you know, with the mobile phone, which is an amazing innovation for Africa, and I hope we utilize it properly. We've jumped over the, the landline. Uh, we're now jumping over the computer. The average person's first interaction with a PC or with technology is from mm. a mobile phone mm. rather than with a PC. And through that now, we're going to jump over the, the bank account. Let's just take Ghana as an example. I understand that everything's actually going your way in a sense, but the mm. government's encouraging it now, isn't it? Really? Very much so. You know, the government, uh, which came into power uh, early this year, has really promised to, to put in place three key pillars by the end of the year. Uh, one is identity. The other is addressing, and thirdly, uh, mobile technology, for payments especially. And what they're hoping to do is go straight to mobile phones or mobile interfaces for all government services. You, you, you spoke a couple of years ago at a, at a fintech conference, uh, which seemed to coin the, the word finnovation, which mm. is a, a good one, isn't yes. it? Um, and you said there was room for many, many more startups. Yes. There'll be people watching this thinking, yes. well, you know, I wouldn't mind going into that. So yes. th there really is room, is there? What, what do you need to get into your sort of sector, like to be somebody like you? Everything. You know, there's, there's room for everything. Uh, we have so, we're so behind that we need all kinds of innovation to get us going. Uh, but it's not that easy also. There are also challenges on the ground. You know, there's very little infrastructure. Uh, and so companies like Interpay have been focusing on building the infrastructure, connecting all the pipes together, mm. uh, leveraging off the work that the telcos have already done in building the infrastructure for telephone, uh, mobile phones, and then with mobile money. But it still needs, you know, any, any transaction needs multiple levels of interaction. You know, so you can imagine purchasing a, a sandwich from a coffee shop with your card. Yeah. It needs multiple technology layers in between. And th those are all not existing right now. You also, and again, this is something I take you back to that conference two years ago. You mentioned this. There's got to be trust, yes. isn't there? Yes, yeah, of now, course. That, how, how, do you, yes. how do you get that? I think the only way to build trust is, is, of course, by having good partners involved. And then over time with transactions. So trust is very important, and eventually as we build the ecosystem and the players get to work with each other, I think it's also understanding that no one player can do it alone, and so they've got to interact with everyone well, else. indeed. Yes. Again, you spoke about cooperation. Yes. How, how's, that, how's that working out? I think it's coming along. Uh, so now, for example, um, for up to today, most mobile phone companies with their mobile money products are standalone. But now slowly they're beginning to talk to each other, mm -hmm. which of course, it, that interoperability will create a, a boom in transactions. You, you, were, you were going to have in your hands, you may have it right now, but certainly in a few years' time, the most valuable thing in the world, which is quite simply not diamonds, not gold, not all, it's data, isn't yes. it? Yeah. You're, you're going to have that. Exactly. Now, just explain to people watching this how you will use that data and how important it is and indeed how valuable it is. 
I think we don't know exactly how we will all utilize it, uh, but there are many projects out there right now to ensure that data is being collected properly. Of course, the laws have to be in the right place, but a lot of countries are doing that by putting in the right data protection acts. You know, but you're right, data is the next oil. I mean, there was an Economist article on this, I think, two, three months ago, which highlighted this. And especially in a place like Africa, where, like we said, there's no data right now. The, the economy is highly informal. People are unemployed or, or self-employed or you know, employed in agriculture. But with mobile, ten with mobile phones and mobile money, and as they start paying for insurance and savings yeah. and pensions on a daily basis, we then start seeing data. You know, already there are companies out there who are lending tiny amounts just based on your call records. They analyze that and they give you a small loan instantly. I can see people watching this thinking to themselves, this is fantastic. How, how, could, how does an ordinary investor, mm. not, not, a, not a person like you, but an ordinary investor, get into what you're doing? Is it a very informal route? Yes. I mean, are you quoted anywhere? How does somebody take advantage and, you know, join in this? Yeah. Uh, good question once again. It's a very, right now, it's quite informal. Um, of course, uh, Africa is not yet Silicon Valley, and there's expectations of lots of companies investing. Uh, most of the investments in, in, in technology and in innovation are still primarily social investments through the World Bank, through the IFC, the yeah. MasterCard Foundation, yeah. Yeah. the Bill Gates Foundation. Because you are doing, in a sense, community work as well, aren't you? Which is exactly, very exactly. You yes. know, it's still not yet you know, commercial, but it's turning. You know, so you, if you remember, um, um, Mark Zuckerberg was in Kenya and Nigeria, I think, uh, last year. Um, uh, the, the CEO of um, Alibaba was in, uh, Jack Ma was in Lagos um, last week. You know, so slowly looking at this population boom, you just cannot afford to ignore Africa. So, so just before we come to the, the end of this particular part of the program, um, wh what do you reckon your penetration is right now? And what, what's, what's, what's the rest? What's left? What, what do you need to get hold of? Uh, there's still, we're still starting. There's a lot of work to do. I mean, and I'll give you an example. In Ghana, for example, the monthly mobile money transactions are in excess of $1.5 billion. Wow. Mm. You know, which is easily, if you, it's not an exact, uh, you know, it's not a very good uh, comparison, but that's easily 30% of the GDP. Okay. So, keep, thanks very much indeed for the moment. Thank Welcome. you. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome back to Core Africa. We're now joined by our Africa analyst, Stanley Blankson Jr. Stanley is the CEO of Pay Afrique, online remittance company to Africa. Stanley, well, welcome to the show. You've been listening to Thank all you. that. Thank you, Michael. There are challenges, aren't there? Outline what they are. Oh, without, without a doubt, there, 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 there are challenges. And um, I think you always find that uh, wherever there are opportunities, there will be challenges. Um, that said, I think we look back uh, in 2007 when Impesa launched in Kenya. It was a massive success in terms of mobile money payments, and I think the view really was um, how was that going to be replicated across the, the continents? Because it was such a success that uh, we would have expected that most of Sub-Saharan Africa would have gone that way. There, there, there is, there is. I mean, I, I, I won't take it to, 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 to pitch in here, but then there seems to be a bit of a lull in terms of how the take-up has, has gone, um, whether it's down to uh, uh, dynamics in terms of infrastructure not available right. or communication. Have you noticed this? I mean, of course. I mean, the challenges, as you mentioned, are, they're quite strong. I mean, uh, one big thing is, of course, still customer skill. You know, people still don't know how to use mobile phones. Although their phones are there, okay. they're using them very basically. <laughs> yes. And then, of course, uh, governments, uh, governments still represent the largest interaction. Uh, and so if governments were able to push more services to mobile, that would definitely help push the economy. Could I just continue with the theme yes. that he started about um, the, the way that government is, is, in, is involved in this? There is clearly a long way for government to go. You need to develop trust and you need to develop cooperation between these fragmented operators, don't yes. you? How, how, because how, how, you're in the same business in a sense, well, how, how, how do you see that well, I think I think there, there, there has to be the will on the part of governments to actually uh, take advantage of this, this um, advancement in technology. Um, I've always said that the uh, developing theme of a, a, a country or a nation on the continent um, has benefited more with the advancement of technology in the sense that we have leaped over the use of cards, for example, because we weren't developed enough to use the cards. Um, but then to follow on, on what was achieved in Kenya, we can always say that government played a big role in trying to get Impesa to get to where it is. And you'd expect or you'd hope 
that um, other governments in, in other countries as well will, will equally um, will equally assist with the growth of this technology and technology. I mean, you, you can't help thinking as well, Kai, that, that if, if this goes to plan, or at least as much as one can plan for these kind of things, it's going to help an economy like Ghana immensely, isn't right. it? And I think I'm right in saying that the first quarter of this year has not been too bad. There's still a big IMF debt which needs to be renegotiated. Generally speaking, what do you feel from the sharp end, as it were, about what's going on in Ghana and business and the rest? Oh, I think it's very positive. Uh, the, the government is putting in place the right measures to bring the economy back on track. The CD has stabilized, inflation is coming down, interest rates are coming down. You know, government is pushing a lot of uh, infrastructure work. They're building a rail line, you know. I mean, we still have basic issues around agriculture, getting food around. Yeah. You know, so fixing those w will give a big boost to the economy. St Stanley, the dead hand of government, we all know about, don't we? It happens here, it happens everywhere in the world, doesn't it? Th does this area need some kind of regulation over it? Because there will be cowboys, won't there? And we were talking earlier about yes. how important trust is. Where, where, where will that come from? Well, I think that's a very interesting question because um, over the past year, a lot of um, agencies have been talking about how this market is going to be regulated because as it is, it's quite fragmented and, yes. and um, individually regulated by regulatory bodies which don't necessarily communicate with, with each other. So, for example, you can, you can have one um, regulator in Nigeria which is not doing something differently from, sure. from a regulator in Ghana um, and vice versa and across the continent. So, there, there, there needs to be a similar setup from a regulatory point of view, like you have with the FCA, where if you need to do financial yeah. services, you can passport into I mean, That's a very interesting point. It's, so so do, do, is, is the majority of your business within one country, or is, is it cross-country? Because that, that's a very good point. It's cross-country. Regulations cross -country. have to be... It's, okay. it's cross-country. And how does that work? Uh, it works through partnerships, once again. Right. But then, of course, that's a challenge. So meeting the requirements of every country. Every country has different regulations. Uh, and satisfying each of those regulations is time-consuming. Mm -hmm. It is a challenge, but, but it takes time and effort, and we'll do it. This is a really difficult question. I apologise for it, but put, put a time scale on, on this kind of penetration that, that, that he's after. Is it, it seems to be happening very rapidly because the penetration of mobile phones in Ghana is, what, 125%? You see, that's quite big, isn't it? Yeah. It's, 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 yeah. it's, it's massive. massive. It's massive, which is mm -hmm. why, um, for example, at payafrica.com, we make it a point to engage more with the mobile subscribers in African countries with regards to remittances. Yeah. Um, and I think the, the drive really is coming from the masses rather than the, the technology. Right. Um, and, and for that matter, it's only a matter of time before the government or the people in, in authority find the need to actually say, sit down and say, listen, we have to take this thing seriously because if we're not careful, it's going to... Um, uh, convulse all of us. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed. Thanks. Thank you, Michael. All we've got time for, but uh, thanks very much to Sakib Nazir, CEO of Interpay Africa, and Stanley Blankson, Jr., CEO of Pay Afrique. Uh, very insightful discussion on the, on the latest in the payments industry. And if you want to see more on African business, please comment, subscribe, and visit www.corelondon.tv. Bye-bye.